This is the video for Lesson 9 on my website, Basic Subtraction. Just like with addition, we can use a number line to help us do very simple subtraction. So for example, if we wanted to do 5 minus 3, we could start on 5, and then we'll move to the left since we're doing subtraction. We're taking away. I'll move 3 spaces to the left and end up on 2, which is our answer. Now certainly when we work with larger numbers, we need a procedure that will help us. Let's take a look at a few examples. For my first example, I'd like to do 67 minus 23. Now just like with addition, I have to be careful to line up all of my numbers properly. I want the ones place on top of the ones place and the tens place on top of the tens place. And just like with addition, we'll work right to left, starting at the ones place. So I'll do 7 minus 3, which is 4, and I'll do 6 minus 2, which is also 4, and that's our answer, 44. Now that was a very simple example. Let's look at another one. Here, I'd like to do 83 minus 37. Okay. Again, I've lined up my numbers correctly, and I'll start on the right. 3 minus 7. Well, we have a problem there because we're trying to take away a larger number from a smaller number, which doesn't work. Now, some students will try to do 7 minus 3, and they'll just write 4. That is completely wrong. We just don't do that. Here's what we do. I'm going to look at the 8 in 83. That's, as you know, that's in the tens place, and that represents 8 tens. What I'm going to do is just cross out the 8 and make it a 7. So I reduced the top number by 10. Now, how do I make that up? I'm going to take this 3 in the ones place, and I'm going to squeeze in a little 1, which actually represents 10. I've really made the 3 into a 13. So I haven't really altered the value of the top number. I've just rearranged it by borrowing from the tens place. Now we have 13 minus 7, which we can certainly do. The, an the answer is 6. And then 7 minus 3, which is 4. And that's how to do a problem like that. Let's take a look at a slightly more complicated example. 734 minus 48. Again, I've lined up my numbers properly and I'll start on the right. Just like before, we can't do 4 minus 8, so we have to borrow. I'm going to cross out the 3 and make it a 2, and then make that 4 into a 14 by squeezing in a little 1. Now we can do 14 minus 8, which is 6. Move to the column on the left, we have 2 minus 4, which again, we can't do. So I'm going to cross out the 7, in the hundreds place, I'm going to borrow from the hundreds place, make that a 6, and then make this 2 into a 12 with the same logic that I used earlier in the ones place. It may look a little messy, but we have 12 in the tens place, 12 minus 4, that gives us 8, 8 tens, remember, and I have a 6 in the hundreds place, which I'll just bring down, and our answer is 686. Okay, one more example. This one is a little tricky. I'm going to do 500 minus 34. Again, I've lined up my numbers correctly. Now, the first thing we have to do is start on the right. 0 minus 4. We can't do 0 minus 4, so we have to borrow from the column on the left. Now, up until now, we've been able to do that. But now we have a 0 here, and we can't borrow from the 0. So first, we have to adjust this column just so that we'll have something to borrow from. And the way we do that is by borrowing from the hundreds place. I'll make the 5 into a 4. I'll reduce that by 1. And then I'll make this 0 into a 10. So now we have a 10 in the tens place. Now remember, we still have to do some borrowing for the sake of the ones column. So I'm going to take this 10, cross it off, and I'm borrowing and making it a 9 since I reduced that by 1, which means I really reduced the top number by 10, I'll add 10 in the 1's place by putting a little 1 there and making this into the number 10. Now I can do 10 minus 4, which is 6. I can do 9 minus 3, which is 6. And I can just do 4 minus, there's really a 0 there in the 100's place, 4 minus 0 is just 4. Now that problem is a little tricky, and admittedly it starts to look a little messy. What you want to do is take it very slow and very carefully, and make sure you fully understand how all of that worked. 
This is just a very basic introduction to subtraction. Certainly later we'll do much more with subtraction, and you'll learn more about other mathematical operations.